lawyers are once again trying to stop prosecutors from getting their hands on his tax returns. Earlier this month, the Manhattan DA subpoenaed Trump's taxes as part of their investigation into hush money payments to cover up alleged affairs. They are looking for potentially falsified business records in violation of New York state law. In something of a countersuit filed today, Trump's attorneys are citing an often referred to federal guideline that a sitting president of the United States is not subject to the criminal process while he is in office. And they're arguing the subpoena is a bad faith effort to harass the president. Well, we'll see about that, because with us to talk about it is Barbara McQuaid, a veteran federal prosecutor, former U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of the great state of Michigan. Barbara, do they have a case here? No, I don't think so. You know, I think like so much of uh, the conduct of President Trump, the best uh, defense is a good offense. And I think that's what's going on here. Um, in addition to a number of procedural problems that I see with this case, like standing and jurisdiction, I think the most significant problem here is that the president says because a sitting president cannot be indicted, which is a theory, not a, a precedent, um, he can't even be investigated and he can't even be subjected to criminal process. Uh, even Robert Mueller disagreed with that. He said absolutely a president can be investigated because you might want to charge others around him, like members of the Trump organization, or you can charge the president after he leaves office. And so I think that uh, on procedurally and on the merits, this is going to fail, which you know causes one to wonder why is he bringing it in the first place? And I think it's most likely a stall tactic. Let me ask you this, and this is just a consumer question, because on media these days you hear the, the hunger on the left among the resistance to get their hands, and that's the expression they use, get their hands on Donald Trump's tax returns. But as a matter of law and reality, let's say the New York DA is successful and they get however many years they're looking for. Is there any kind of uh, public release provision? Are they put under seal? Is there any reason why people would assume that we and the public are going to get to pour over this guy's tax returns? Not immediately, but they could come out later if there were to be a criminal prosecution. So uh, as, as you are suggesting there, Brian, uh, grand jury material is secret. It's kept private, and so it would be shared only with those people with a need to know who are investigating the case. But as we saw in, for example, the trial of Paul Manafort, if ultimately they become evidence in a trial, they could be produced as exhibits if, for instance, they show uh, expenditures uh, on the tax returns that could support a charge involving the campaign finance violations or the falsification of business records. So not right away, but possibly down the road. We are fortunate around here to have a number of former U.S. attorneys of counsel to us. I already quoted one of them, Joyce Vance, earlier in the hour, and now I'd like to quote you back to you. This is you on Twitter tonight. We need more facts, but if Trump threatened to withhold military aid unless Ukraine digs up dirt on Biden... That could be extortion. And I guess, Barb, that's among the things it could be. Yeah, you know, uh, it could be many other things. But uh, but to me, that is a, a very traditional public corruption charge that gets charged against uh, city officials, state officials, when they are demanding something that is of value to them um, in exchange for an official act. I am going to withhold this thing that you're entitled to until you give me my bribe, the thing that I want. Um, it sounds very much like the kind of thing that we see corrupt politicians engage in all the time. Um, and if so, you know, this might be the kind of act that actually resonates with the public. You know, Russian interference was something that didn't squarely fit within any of the statutes because Congress could never even imagine such a thing. Uh, but with extortion, this is a very bread and butter kind of public corruption crime that gets charged all the time. What an interesting point. Veteran, uh, former federal prosecutor, former U.S. attorney, Barbara McQuaid, it's always a pleasure having you on. Thank you so Thanks, much Brian. for tonight. Coming up for us, foreign policy. It has a funny way of sneaking in and redirecting a presidential race. In fact, are we now watching the start of that process? In a moment, we're going to talk to the senior most self-described defrocked Republican strategist in the business when we come back.